Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Powder coating is pretty cool. Basically, you spray statically charged powder at something and it kind of sticks to it. Then you take that thing and you put it in an oven that you're not gonna use for food. While it's in the oven, that heat is fusing all of that powder into a single coating on the outside of the object, which looks really cool, but it's also way stronger than paint. A small oven like this makes it super easy to powder coat small parts, but what if you've got a big part that's way bigger than your oven? Well, then you get to make a tool. Let's give it a shot. Now, of course, you do have some other options if you need something bigger. A lot of people will buy used kitchen ovens and wire them up in their shop and just dedicate them to powder coating, and that works pretty well, but it still has a size limitation. What if you need to powder coat a motorcycle frame or something that's just kind of long? Well, then you have to look at a bigger oven. And when you get into the powder coating ovens where you could roll in a rack holding a frame or something like that, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars for a giant thing that takes up a lot of space and really only has one purpose. After seeing the prices of those big ovens, I started looking at some infrared heaters that are on stands and you can roll them up to an object and bake it kind of in space. But those are anywhere from three to $600 minimum. And I don't think they should be. And that led me to find these. Now this is a set of two infrared heaters that together will produce 2000 watts, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the perfect temperature for powder coating. And the two of these together were $55. The only downside here is that these tubes are the infrared heaters. They're not wired up, so I have to wire it up and be really careful not to break this glass. But other than that, this gives me a lot of flexibility. I have two heaters that I can put on some sort of a stand make them adjustable so I have more flexibility about where to put the heat. So we're gonna put these together and then we're gonna make an interesting stand so that we have a lot of options. If you're watching this video to learn something or be inspired, you're gonna love today's sponsor. It's CuriosityStream. And if you're not familiar, CuriosityStream is a streaming service of educational content. Really, it's a collection of super well-produced documentary films and series and individual shows. And there is tons of stuff there for everyone. They have content covering history and engineering and technology and science, and there's new stuff that drops every single week. Recently, I watched a couple episodes of the series called Classic Cars on there. There's an episode about Mustangs, which I thought was really cool. There's one about Corvettes that I haven't watched yet, but I really like the documentary style about how a car came to be. On the flip side of that, I started watching a series called How to Make a Human. It's all about building AI robots, and it's really cool and a little bit scary. Whether you're into those things or not, there is something on the service for every one, including kids. They have a whole section called Curiosity Kids, which is a collection of really good educational content to keep your kids engaged and not just watching garbage. Now, all of this stuff is available starting at $5 a month, and you can watch it anywhere. You can watch it on your TV, on your mobile device, on your computer, and it's super easy to get started. You can go to curiositystream.com slash make stuff or scan this QR code and then use the code make stuff, and that's going to give you 25% off. Be sure to go check them out, and big thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. Okay, that was easy enough. So now I got a mounting bracket on the back of it, and I have a hole right in the center. And that way I can mount that hole to an arm, and the entire thing can spin like this. So I can have these vertically, or I can have them horizontally, and I can still move them up and down if I need to, although I don't know how much that'll matter. So now that I've got both of these heaters mounted with a bracket, I have to make something to put the brackets onto. And here's my extremely detailed drawing with measurements. Basically, it's some sort of a base with casters with a piece sticking out of it that then holds another piece that can spin around. And on the end of that spinny piece, both of those heaters are gonna go on. So I need a base and then two pieces of steel with some holes drilled in it. Both these pieces are cut. And basically, I have one that's gonna go upright and then one that's gonna be mounted right there and it needs to spin. So I have to drill a hole in the middle of this one and the end of this one. And then to get those pieces to stay together, I found this thing. I don't know what this is from, I don't know why I have it, but I found a nut that matches and it's long enough that I can put it through both pieces and then tighten it down so I can actually tighten it in place to keep those pieces from spinning when I don't want them to, loosen it, they can spin, get them in place and then I tighten it back up. So I just have to drill a couple of holes that big and then we can do some welding.
I welded that nut on so it's captive, so this thing moves freely unless you tighten it up and then it will keep whatever angle you put it at. So now that we've got this, it's just a matter of making the base. This thing needs to be able to roll around, so I was gonna make a really simple square tube base that was just kind of an H shape, so I could have four casters on it, no big deal. But I don't have a lot of extra square tubing except for these scraps that are curved. Now these are left over from when I did these big curved benches a long time ago, and I've got several pieces that are like this and I can't really do much else with them, but they would actually work pretty well for a base. So we're gonna make a weird curved base out of a couple of these cut and welded together. Look at that. It looks like I'm being artistic and I'm actually just being cheap. But this actually is gonna work out pretty well. Because there's a big gap here, I can roll right up to something. So if the thing I'm powder coating is already on a stand, there's a place for it. Now that I've got this thing, I just have to take this thing and weld it right there and then add some casters. And then uh, it's pretty much ready to try out. One of the things I always recommend to people is if you're getting rid of something in your shop that has casters on it, just take them off. Because I've got a big bin of casters, so I didn't have to pay for these again. They are swivel, and even though they're a small wheel, they're actually gonna work pretty well for this. The plate on these is a little bit bigger than the steel that I'm using, but this thing is absolutely more about function than form, so we're gonna go ahead and weld these on, and then we can roll it around. So now I have what you might call a conundrum. This thing should be powder coated. It's a perfect example of something that's big and useful that should have a layer of protection on it, but I would have to use this to be able to powder coat something this big. So I'm not really sure how to do that. I think I'm just gonna have to come up with a temporary solution so I can powder coat the two parts and then I'll be able to finally assemble it. Okay, so here's what happened. On Amazon, I could not find the amperage of each one of these heaters, so I just kinda like wired them up together and assumed that it would probably work. But, the two of these together, running off the same plug with nothing else, actually blew a 20 amp breaker. So I'm gonna wire these up separately, plug them into two separate breakers, and hopefully that will work. wired up one of the heaters. So I've been kind of doing this in little sections and it's taken a while, but it's totally working. The heater actually works pretty great and puts out a ridiculous amount of heat. After this section's done, I'll be able to mount the heaters on this thing and show you what it's finally gonna look like. But I do think this actually works pretty well. I also wanted to point out that I've only done powder coating a couple of times and I didn't do a great job of getting full coverage. You could use a second coat but I probably won't worry about that for now. The point of making this thing is so that I can powder coat bigger things in the future, have practice, and get better at it. Now that they're mounted, the last thing was to get some really heavy duty extension cords. These are 12 gauge wire, so they can handle the load of each one of those and I cut off the ends, wired them up to them separately so each one has its own cable. That way I can plug each one individually or use them both at the same time on different circuits. Now that I've got these things attached, this thing is done.
This thing totally works. It's fully adjustable. It stays where you put it, which is pretty cool. And you can just tighten and loosen all those things to adjust it if you need to. But I have a couple of things that I need your help with. One, what should I use this for? This is a way to powder coat big objects, but what should those objects be? Give me some ideas down in the comments. And two, help me learn how to powder coat things better. Give me your tips and tricks down below because I really don't know what I'm doing and I would love to learn how to do it well so that I can use it in future projects. If you've got some tips, leave them down there. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for bloopers. Maybe if I had like a paddle? Ah. I'm gonna mount those on there and then I'll, sh I don't, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm gonna do all that again. Let me start, all, I'm gonna do all that again. Now, of course, you do have some other options here. You don't have to get a small on, uh, onion, I almost called it onion, not oven.